Hey Capricorns, how y'all doing? Welcome, we're gonna be doing your December general reading here. So let's get right into your meditation. I was taken to a desert <laughs> and then I saw, it was very like Western film where I saw a tumbleweed like move across the desert and I heard the um, down, down, down. <laughs> you know that sound effect. And then I saw a raccoon step into it felt like I was watching a movie so it felt like a raccoon like stepped onto this you know uh, into camera view on screen and the raccoon was dressed up in western gear like wearing like a sheriff's like a vest with like a sheriff's star pin on it and like a little hat and then it took a gun out and like tried to like swivel it around its finger like it but it felt like it was like a show it was like trying to do tricks with the the gun but it kept dropping it and then it and then it just like stopped trying at a certain point. The clothes didn't fit quite right. And then it just ended up putting its hands on its hips and posing. It was one of the stranger things I've ever seen in a meditation. But then I saw the raccoon kind of hold that pose. And I heard a RuPaul phrase, which is if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. And it was very much this feeling of uh, because raccoon energy is very much about the six of pentacles energy, which is about equal give and take and reciprocity, right? But it was very interesting because I feel like Capricorn, you're in a split screen energy for December. Because I then saw the raccoon move from this bright sunny day where it was like the lights, you know, of the film set were, were on him, right? Or her. And then I saw the raccoon move off to a very, like a nighttime scene, a nighttime setting. And I saw it take off the clothes that don't really fit it anyway, and then sit down and, and this huge grin cross its face. And then I saw it pull out a deck of cards and start to play cards. And it feels like this split screen of how things appear to be, what you're doing, not just for appearances sake, but things that you are, quote, expected to do or meant to do. It feels like maybe it could be like getting your exercise in, eating a certain way, or showing up uh, when and how you're supposed to show up, staying ready so you ain't got to get ready. Everything that falls into that category is over here. Okay? When your mom answers or calls and you answer the phone, you're like, I'm fine, I'm good. Whether that's true or not, everything under that category. And then there's this other side of the split screen over here, which is what you do in the darker, more quiet hours, which is for you and only for you that no one else sees. Like it doesn't see the light of day, it's with and only for you. What's really interesting about this is I feel like there is also this energy of, how do I say this? There's like things that you feel, um, obligated might be a strong word, but there are things that you're expected to do. It could be family gatherings, it could be turning things into work at a certain time, it could be looking a certain way, it could be something, whatever you're expected to do. That could be self-expectation too. Whatever you're expected to do, there's this sense of like, yes, I, I, I appear to be, I am, like meeting these expectations, but where I'm finding my true bliss and joy is in my own hours. In my, oh, I just saw 3.33 right when I looked at the timer. It's in my own hours, it's in my own time when I'm doing things that, you know, maybe others might either disapprove of or cock an eyebrow at or that I wouldn't want others to know about or see. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's, you know, like uh, self-destructive or anything. It's just what you do with and for yourself. So it feels like that split screen is pertinent for you in December, okay? See what's going on. But yeah, raccoon, six of pentacles, energy. You know, raccoon's also about using all the resources at your disposal as well. And recycling. You could be recycling something in terms of like recycling an old idea, you know, recycling, um, you know, actually recycling items from your household, whatever that is for you, or reusing them, something about that. Because I'm seeing images of Wally, -E, the movie Wally. -E. It's a Pixar film. Uh huh. So we have the dragonfly here, which is really cool. So <laughs> this is really cheeky, actually. So the dragonfly equates to an ace of swords energy, which is about, you know, big realization, big clarity. Ace of swords also represents writers, right? What I'm really obsessed with about this, though, is that the dragonfly, everything has a light and a shadow energy to it, right? And I'm really obsessed that on the back end of your meditation that you should get the dragonfly because the shadow side of the dragonfly energy is illusion and how things appear versus how they really are. 
Why do I feel like some of you guys, it feels like a Superman Clark Kent situation as well for some of you, where it's like things appear one way and then there's a whole other reality where they look completely different. And it feels like both are valid in their own right, but it feels like you're deriving a lot more joy by what you're doing when no one is looking or by the time that you spend, you know, in your own energy, right? And for some of you, you are writing. Ace of Swords is like, but it's not just writing, it's writing down the truth. It's not just like, you know, well, journaling is writing down the truth, so, you know, in a certain manner of speaking, but this is like, writing your manifesto or writing what you know. I just heard, I'm writing what I know. I'm writing what I know to be true. But again, this is also looking beneath the surface, looking beyond how things appear and getting to the truth of it, right? Some of you guys are delving deep, but I feel like some of you guys are also looking back on your past, maybe even your childhood, because sometimes the expectation, okay, on the bottom of this deck is seven of cups of dragonflies all up on it. Sometimes the expectations that we have, either placed on us by others or that we create for ourselves, they can stem from childhood. Things that we learned um, from teachers or parents or siblings or whatever have you, where it's like there's certain expectations. And I feel like you are looking at that. And again, raccoon energy is about looking at those, you know, um, aspects that aren't as obvious and going, where does this come from? Where does, oh my God, perfect. Where does my relationship to success, where did I get this from? How did I learn this behavior? I feel like you are investigating, actively investigating, perhaps even through writing, um, learned behaviors. Okay. Judgment, which is all about the past. <laughs> Gorgeous Capricorn. So judgment here. The tagline of this key is look back with pleasure, right? And I love that you're getting this for the holiday season as well. Hey. Um, but you know, this is very, I'm getting a very distinct image around this. I'm getting uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and how Rudolph the Nose would light the way through what? The darkness. There, I'm telling you, there's this shadow light thing going on. You could be shining a light on what's unknown or the darker aspects of yourself or, or what you see in society. You could be exposing something within of yourself, exposing something about it, whatever that is. But there is something here, but I do feel like on the whole, you are investigating learned behaviors from your past, <clears throat> from your childhood, right? This is about a life review so that you can move forward into the final key of the major arcana, which is world, which is successful completion, graduation, and celebration times, right? But this is that, you know, Let's just go with this like holiday theme here. This is that, you know, ghosts of Christmas past that Ebenezer Scrooge, you know, has to face. That's what this is. But it, it can be a light. It can be a source of light, right? But in, if you look at the past as something that is in the rearview mirror, then there is an aspect of fading or darkness around it, right? Because you, when you think of a spotlight, it's usually guiding your way, what, forward, like the reindeer here right? You're being used to take that spotlight and point it backwards. Look at where you came from. Look at the belief systems that, that you inherited, right? See that clearly. There's a lot of information in that for you, and it, and it wants to be done. I'm also really drawn to this horn. I think this is Gabriel's horn on the ground here. There really is something about using your voice, speaking the truth, writing the truth, communicating the truth, but also realization, clarity, right? I feel like there's some big aha and epiphany moments here. And there's a lot of gifts within it, right? Oh God, I can't tell you that, oh, you got your own key on the bottom here with the devil key, hey. You know, I can't tell you the number of times, I'm about halfway through the readings, I can't tell you the number of times this has come out today for the collective for uh, December, let's talk. So you have two of swords here. So this is very much about marrying together the mind and the heart, all right? This is a holding a conference between the two. Now, okay, mind, you're over here. Okay, heart, you're over here. Who wants to take the floor? Who has something to say? Which one of you has been in greater expression and which one needs more attention and wants more attention and deserves more attention, right? This is having a conference at the seaside and going, okay, I'm going to, again, have a conference with my mind and my heart so that I can move forward with both intuition and information, right? But there, there really is, I mean, look at this. 
Spurred is literally looking to the past. <laughs> you could be drawing from your past for inspiration. You could be thinking about the past, writing out the past, reviewing the past. But you could also be looking at yourself in terms of where you've come from in order to inform where you want to go. Right? It would be different for everyone. But I feel like the truth is in, you know, full order here. Whoa, the fool's on the bottom. We were just talking about that. Well, we're talking about the world. The fool comes after the world key, right? This is the fresh brand new start, right? But I do feel like this is what you're being prepped for, by the way. So we have four of swords here. Yeah, I, I, I do feel like there's going to be a certain sense of incubation or... Um, what is that word? Percolation? <laughs> that needs and wants to happen on the back end of looking to the past. Because look how this is storyboarding. Look at this. <clears throat> Attention and credence to the past, right? Marrying together, bringing together the heart and the head so that you have both into, um, information and intuition. Moving into the four of swords. Four of swords, interestingly. And oh my God, is that the Guys, y'all, this is literally what I saw in your meditation with the desert and the tumbleweed blowing by. I'm so obsessed with this. I almost missed that. Four of Swords is, is rest, right? It's mental rest because the swords do speak of, you know, the mind and communication matters, right? Air energy here. Actually, you have a lot of air energy here. A lot of thinking going on, a lot of mental activity, maybe even some analysis paralysis at points as well. But the way through analysis paralysis is, um, well, how you achieve clarity around analysis par paralysis is very individual to you. But I do feel like you're being advised to give space and time to it as opposed to trying to avoid it or put it to the side. And again, a lot of you guys will do this through writing. Okay. Um, four of Swords. So again, this is, this is, you know, taking time to rest and shut down. I feel like you're going to be assimilating a lot of what you realize and see and these epiphany aha moments. There is going to be this needed and wanted energy on the other side of this work of assimilation and processing. I feel like this is you processing, which makes sense. I mean, I feel like it's also processing on a larger scale because this has been a year, okay, there's a lot to process. So making time around that feels highly beneficial whichever way you look at it, right? Okay. So with the judgment, we have the five of wands coming up to clarify. So remember, the wands speak of the actions that we take. They also rule the realm of artistry and creation and, and what we're passionate about, right? Passion projects. Five of Wands, however, is competitiveness. It's a push and pull. It's an angst. It's a, it's an it's a inner and outer tension. Remember when I said you're being called to look at the past and really become clear around what beliefs you adopted, what you inherited, from your family or the, where you grew up. You can inherit a lot of belief systems or going about things from where you grew up, just as much as who you grew up with. You're being asked to really look at that stuff and see it clearly and go, okay, um, this isn't mine. This is a product of my dad. This is a product of my the community I grew up in. This is not mine. It has no place in where I want to go. So now that I see it, I can release it, okay? But you're being asked to get really clear about that because it does Oh, the raccoon with the clothes that don't fit. Okay, remember how I said I saw the raccoon with the clothes that don't fit, and then I saw the raccoon like in a split screen go and live their best life without those clothes on? You're being asked to release, shed, and donate, or <laughs> recycle, right? Uh, aspects of yourself that are not really yours. Expectations of others, expectations of yourself, a certain way of looking, feeling, being, let all of that go. Let yourself be and really come to terms and, and, and become clear around what is with and for you. If you are free of the expectations and belief systems and perceived limitations that you inherited or made in and of yourself, what would be left after that? What would be left? That's dragonfly energy for sure. Mm -hmm. I do feel like for some of you, this is about your attitude towards work. There's something about what is success to you? What does it look like? Have, okay, a really good example of this 
is you may have inherited the belief that you know any <clears throat> any work well done is hard work right like hard work is the only work hard work is the only work worth you know pursuing um, what's that other saying I'm trying to think of no pain no gain no pain, no gain is a really good example of that. It's like a belief that we inherit. It was like no pain, no gain. And then we go about our lives that way, which means that we push beyond, you know, the point that our bodies or minds or spirits want us to. And we end up getting, you know, overworked, run down, you know, we, we lose our zest, whatever that is for you. So that's a really good example of examining it. Just observe yourself in these moments and go, why am I pushing myself when I'm tired? Who taught me that? Oh my God, my dad didn't know when to take a break because he inherited, you know, a fear of laziness from his dad. You can trace this stuff back to the generations oftentimes, right? My grandfather taught my dad that the worst thing in the world was to be lazy. And then my dad taught me either directly or by example, because kids watch through learning, right? That, you know, no pain, no gain. So as a result, I really don't know when to stop or take a break or enjoy life. And as a result, I'm missing a lot of it and I'm not as connected to me as I am connected to my grandfather and my father. See where I'm going with this? An example. Two swords. <laughs> Good. Okay. So look at this. We have seven of swords here to clarify the two of swords. Okay, let's talk about this. So this is making a lot of sense. Seven of Swords traditionally speaks of self-sabotage. It's that thief in the middle of the daytime key, which also makes sense. Remember when I saw that split screen? Is this not like a split screen with the mirror images here? Like I cannot. And look at the shadow energy of the Jaguar here. Yeah, this is self-sabotage. This is meeting with your head and your heart to go, how am I self-sabotaging myself? And what areas can I improve? What belief systems and I inherit is, is the only way that I'm going to be, I'm just giving you examples here, is the only way that I'm going to be worthy of love is if I'm thin. Is the only way that I'm going to be worthy of, you know, a promotion at work is if I work 80 hours a week. Stuff like that. You're being asked to really look at that. Observe what is true for you. Yeah. Dream time as well, again, with the dream time. Definite messages through dreams. Keeping the dream journal nearby would be great. Oh my God, look! The Fool. I said this is where you were going, where you're being prepared for. I'm obsessed. Four swords into the Fool. Yeah, you are percolating and preparing for your next new chapter, which is really nice. Did you know that I associate Capricorns with wolves? The reason being is that the uh, wolf moon falls within your birthday season. Well, it's part of the reason why it actually goes a lot deeper than that. But you guys are my wolves, my Capricorns. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See this rabbit here? You know, on one hand, rabbits represent fertility and new cycles and abundance. But they also represent fear. There's a saying within the Kim Cran's animal book that says, um, like a parable to go with the, the rabbit is that it's very vocal, right? <clears throat> Rabbits get very vocal when they're afraid. So there's this rabbit in the woods and he won't stop talking about one day the eagle's gonna find him and swoop down and eat him. He just knows it. And because he knows it, he won't stop talking about it. And so one day the eagle hears him going on, on, on and is alerted as to his exact location and then swoops down and eats him, which is another way of saying that the rabbit can represent a fear or, and also a self-fulfilling prophecy. So there is this aspect of here as well, you guys, of being mindful of the thoughts that you think and realizing that your expectations will mirror your reality. So if you expect things to go well for you, if you expect that what you do and what you have is more than enough, right, and that you will manifest what you desire and that you're worthy of it, then that will be a reality. But if you expect things to be difficult because they always have been difficult, the universe will conspire to prove you right. The universe will conspire to prove you right. I feel like that there's a larger reason also behind that of why this is coming forward for you in terms of examining what belief systems that you inherited, right? 
I'm sorry for all the sound effects, y'all. I don't know what's going on right now. Sound effects. <laughs> Quiet on set. <laughs> But that's what it is. I, I feel like you're being asked to release a lot of this stuff so that you can have a clean slate, a blank slate, and a beautiful way to do that is through writing or journaling or even I'm feeling for another group of y'all who are not so much into the writing, talk it out. <laughs> talk it out with a neutral party. I don't know if, you know, I mean, listen, you do you, but I don't know if talking to your, your mom about the beliefs you inherited from the family is necessarily going to be met without bias. Um, you know, maybe talking to a neutral party or even a therapist or, you know, anyone who just doesn't have a pony in the race, a good friend, right? And saying, you know what, I've been thinking about X, Y, Z, A, B, C. Well, can you just be a sounding board? Can you hold space for me around this? Because this, I really feel like I'm I'm starting to see and look at things, and and I'm hoping that moving forward, I can release a lot of these blocks that have, or a lot of these thoughts that have been blocks in my path. And I feel like you're you're really going to be seeing that in December. This also makes sense as well with December being a time where you're going to be communicating a lot, if not spending time with family. So you could be starting to observe things along this line as well as you talk more or around family, depending on your situation, right? Being, oh my God, my Aunt Tina always expect, is always waiting for the other shoe to drop. And here she is at the dinner table talking about it. Oh my God, I'm always expecting the other shoe to drop. I sound just like my Aunt Tina. And my Aunt Tina always has something, you know, to, to cry about, but I feel like it's because she's creating it. And that's the story that she's written for herself. And that's why it is manifesting as such. What is the story that I tell myself about myself? What is the story that I want to write for my future? If I'm the auteur of my own life, what do I want my story to be? And allow your pen to be Harold's magic crown, honey, from Harold and the Purple Crown, yes, and create the story that you want your life to be. You have the power and the energy to do that, Capricorn. And what a better time to do it than during the season that, that falls right before your birthday season. Order up. You know what I mean? Order up. Really beautiful, Capricorn. It's very, 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 very nice. Okay. Let's get an article. Let me shop these. You know what? I've been really committed to this oracle deck today, but I'm getting called to this one. So I'm going to go with it. All right. Okay. Let's see what's going on with your oracle. December Capricorn. Yes, indeedy. Oh my God, I'm so obsessed. Owl, wisdom, how beautiful is this? I think this is so beautiful. So, I mean, this pretty much says it all, owl wisdom, but I'm gonna go another step here. So why I feel like this is so beautiful for y'all in particular is because the owl, so there's a saying in the Ted Andrews Animal Speak book that when you read about the owl, that <clears throat> the sun lives through the owl at night. The sun lives through the owl at night, which is so perfect with the meditation I saw for you guys as well, with like the split screen. So what that means is there's a misconception that owls can only see really well in the nighttime, but that's not true. It's that they see equally as well at night as they do during the day. So again, with the shadow and light and about what you're seeing, your perceptions, and really filtering out what is true, what is not true. What is, it, what is adopted from others and what is actually true for you inside from your soul perspective, right? You're being asked to really click in and see yourself clearly. And also seeing yourself, I feel like specifically for some of y'all, this is about seeing yourself clearly in relationship to others. Observe. Observe. <laughs> because from a place of observation, we can see the most clearly. It's when we are able to step outside of our emotions, right? And really observe and see clearly. That's where transformation can really take hold and, and manifest for us, right? from observation. I can't believe you have the dragonfly, which is about illusions versus reality 
and clarity. And then the owl, which is seeing clearly into those darker aspects and spaces of, of you know, our surroundings and ourselves. Obsessed with this. Find within yourself the, you, your own wisdom and what you know to be true, independent of others, right? This is really beautiful, Capricorn. I'm all about it. <sighs> I'm also getting a lost message because I'm really drawn to these stars up here, these constellations. I'm getting a very special note. The wolf moon that falls um, in your birthday season is going to be there's something around that wolf moon. Um, the, the moon is a three-day cycle as well, so I would look to that time period. I feel like that might be a high manifestational time. I would write during the... I'm, Listen, y'all, if you know me at all, very seldomly am I like, you know, on these three days, you must do this and then do a pinch of this and then fold it three times and then burn it on a mountaintop and then say these words. Like, I'm more of a do whatever works for you kind of gal. But, <laughs> but I'm telling you, there's something about the wolf moon within that three-day cycle, the night before, the night of, and the night after the wolf moon, that is, it is a high point of clarity and illumination for you. So I would definitely take some time to sit down with either a paper and a pen or meditation, or a quiet walk through the woods, or whatever that is for you. But there's a point of illumination around that time that I think is going to help you see things quite clearly, and maybe even a glimpse of what's to come. But you're being prepared for a beautiful new cycle, and you don't want anything in your energy weighing you down or acting as a roadblock around self-sabotage self or feelings of worthiness or whatever it is. You can tell Aunt Tina that she can keep her, <laughs> keep her thoughts to herself. <laughs> Okay. All right, Capricorns. This was your December general reading. I so hope that this, I can stop looking at this. It's so beautiful. I so hope that this helped and resonated. If so, please do let me know in the comments below. I absolutely love reading your comments so, so much. And just a special note on the back end of this reading, you know, this is the last reading of 2020. This is the last one. And so I just want to take a moment to really thank you guys so much. Um, you Capricorns are within the, you know, top few signs that, that really have been my biggest support. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. I am wishing you a most blessed and happy December and a most prosperous 2021. I will be back with your January videos quite soon. And just thank you. Thank you as always for being here. And most of all, thank you so much for being you and be well until next time.